up, the search for a missing girl in the Black Hills has been suspended. We have the latest on the case of Serenity Denard. Plus, we have an update on a bill that would require Governor Kristi Noem to release the cost of security while she travels. Good morning, this is Kelly Land on the go with all you need to know in news and weather as you start your day. Another day, another report of people getting into unlocked cars. Sioux Falls police say one of the latest incidents happened at a convenience store. Authorities say a woman left her car running and unlocked for only a few moments. When she came out, there was a guy sitting in her car rifling through it. Um, she kind of asked him what he was doing. He took off running. He said he thought it was a friend's car and then left. Police are once again reminding everyone to lock your cars and remove any valuables. After hundreds of people logged 6,000 miles, the search for Serenity Denard has been suspended. The Pennington County Sheriff's Office says there has been a lack of new information. The nine-year-old disappeared nearly two years ago when she ran away from the Black Hills Children's Home. Deputies say the investigation will remain open and encourages anyone with information or tips on where Serenity might be to contact them. Well, turning to weather now, snow is in the forecast for the weekend. Let's send it over to meteorologist Scott Munt for a check on the forecast. All right, good morning, everybody. We are looking at a slight chance for light snow showers as we do go through this weekend. The amounts in South Dakota should stay less than an inch. We may approach two inches in parts of Minnesota and northwestern Iowa. We're also watching the possibility for freezing drizzle starting tonight and lasting into tomorrow. And even though we'll have cloudy skies today, temperatures will still be above average. And we're looking at that trend to continue to early next week before those numbers do take a tumble. More details on the Kettle Lane Live Doppler forecast with Brian Karstens coming up. Thank you, Scott. One Kelloland school district has canceled school due to COVID-19. In a post on its Facebook page, the Beersford School District says there will be no school for students and staff in grades 6 through 12 today. The school district says it is due to the number of positive cases and close contacts in the middle and high schools. The district also says that its varsity girls basketball team will not participate in the Big East Conference tourney due to its COVID-19 protocols. Today is a big day for the residents at Touchmark at All Saints in Sioux Falls. This afternoon, they'll receive their second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. Uh, while we know that there are, there's still um, a long stretch in this pandemic to go and that the vaccine isn't the end-all be-all, it's a big step in the right direction for our community. Three weeks ago, the residents received their first round of the vaccine, which they called a day of hope. The latest data from the State Department of Health shows more than 63,000 South Dakotans have received one or both doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. The state entered 1D of its vaccination plan last week, which includes those who are 80 and older and some people at high risk. Prairie Lakes Healthcare Systems president and CEO says patients have been very appreciative of getting the vaccine. Um, they're eager to get it, they're excited to get it, and they're very thankful. And so it's nice when you're working with patients like that. Um, so we're glad to be out there working with this high-risk population, making sure that they're safe. DeBoer says the health system has vaccinated more than 750 people in the 1D category. A House bill endorsed by both parties at the state capitol seeks to disclose the security costs for Governor Kristi Noem's travel on behalf of former President Donald Trump's campaign last year. Lawmakers from both parties have requested the information, but say they've been refused by the governor's office. During a news conference Thursday in Pierre, we asked the governor why she won't release the cost of her traveling security. Well, I don't talk about security. Um, I never have and, and no governor ever has. It's for obvious reasons. Uh, that's not something I should be commenting on. This is after the fact. After the fact, we're not asking for any travel information, anything that would compromise safety or security. After the fact, we're simply asking, what tax dollars did you spend? Let us know how much. That's all we're asking. House Bill 1089 is now headed for the House Judiciary Committee. Also happening at the state capitol, a Rapid City lawmaker is proposing protections for people who refuse vaccines. Representative Phil Jensen is sponsoring House Bill 1159, which says it wants to make sure no person, as a result of refusing to accept any vaccination, be subjected to discrimination or retaliation with respect to association, education, employment, housing, property rights, public accommodations, or public services. The bill comes in the middle of the COVID-19 pandemic, which has resulted in more than 107,000 cases, more than 6,000 hospitalizations, and about 1,700 deaths in South Dakota. 
And that's a look at some of our top stories. Now let's get one last look at your weather with meteorologist Brian Carstens. Brian? All right. Weather this morning looking at areas of clouds. And yes, indeed, there is a little drizzle, possible mist, if you will, here in a couple of spots. One thing I will tell you right now is that tonight, especially in our eastern counties, we're likely going to thicken up that moisture to have more widespread freezing drizzle. And unfortunately, that's going to be a player in these road reports for Saturday. I do think that that will be an issue. It's just a matter of how widespread or how thick that freezing drizzle is. But keep in mind that it's going to be around. And then, of course, temperatures tomorrow, not really that cold. It'll be just about freezing for high in Sioux Falls and even Aberdeen, close to 31, 32 as well. There is a little light snow drifting into the west tomorrow. You also have a north wind in Rapid City on Saturday. And so it's going to feel a lot colder there compared to what we have today. And then eventually, Sioux Falls also kind of swing around to the north and then we'll whip up a little snow here uh, for late Saturday, mainly Saturday evening and early Sunday morning. Sioux Falls probably looking at around an inch, maybe not even that much, but it won't be a lot. And then for southwest Minnesota, northwest Iowa, perhaps an inch or two in some of those areas like Worthington and Spencer. So those are some highlights for the weekend. Next week is going to actually start the week pretty mild. But boy, once we get to Thursday, Friday, Saturday next week, that's a whole nother world. And we are still fully on board with this whole concept of the coldest air of the winter. So I really want to make sure we at least mention that because your seven day, you're going to be looking at that thinking that that looks just fine and dandy. But day seven and a half, well, seven and eight in particular, that's the change. 49, that's our high today in Rapid City. Very comfortable high temperature, 32 in Mitchell. Lows tonight mainly in the 20s here with that southeasterly wind and then priming things with moisture supply coming up from the south. And that's going to mean tomorrow's weather a little slick, a little icy in spots. We're going to hold temperatures into the low to mid 30s into the last half of the weekend. And then next week could see some more snow chances by Wednesday, Thursday. There's a potent system that will likely come into the plains. We'll see where it goes. That's something we can deal with at a later time. Obviously, temperatures, too, for Pier and Rapid. Very nice start to early next week. 40s and 50-degree weather, pretty likely Monday, Tuesday in Rapid City. Check out details with our Storm Center update right now at Kettleland.com.